Ooh, that's a good one. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, look at this fish. Oh. Man, these fish are mean. Give my worm back. Oh. oh, look at that fish. <laughs> What's going on, guys? This is Gene Jensen. Uh, I want to sit down, give you guys a tour of my office. This is the new Alumacraft Pro 185. That's a five pound bass. I'm gonna put him back in the water. Whoo, gosh almighty. After I take a picture of him. Man, oh man. <laughs> you will see that on my angler app. Mm, love dock fishing. Let's start off with the back end of the boat. I this, like I said, this is an Alumacraft Pro 185. It's an 18 and a half, almost 19 foot boat. It's got a 115 horsepower Evinrude G2. Um, it's one of the first ones out on the market. So if you guys haven't seen it yet, that's probably why. But uh, let's start there. All right, so here it is, the 115 horsepower Evinrude G2. I'm gonna show you guys some of the cool things I like about it. First of all, it's got electronic steering. Uh, no more hydraulic steering, which is great. I got to get used to the noise though. It makes a little bit of a different noise, which is just me being uh, uh, being a little paranoid over noises. But uh, a couple of things that I like on it, I really ought to be doing this on the trailer, but it comes with its own transom saver. See that bar right there? It drops down. And I'll, uh, when I get on the trailer, I'll do some B-roll and show this, of you. show this to you, but it drops down and locks in right there. And then the other thing you got to remember is it's got a um, a little device to keep it from uh, from turning while you're trailering or or slide or the the motor turning from, to one side, and you just line up that hole with that hole and drop that pin right there into it, and it keeps it from doing it. It's pretty cool. So I got two dual power pole. These are two blades. Uh, they go to about six feet deep, which is plenty good for me. Let me put them back down before I drift in the wrong spot. All right, get those locked down. Hopefully we don't go into that tree with those wasps. But anyway, so let's look at the back. So I got the boat completely electronics free because I have all my stuff. My electronics all get rigged in uh, at Bucks Island Marine in Gaston, Alabama best rigger on the planet Justin he can make wires disappear he may I mean this thing looks like spaghetti before he gets a hold of it and then he just tucks everything away puts it puts a little extra stuff puts a new bus bar right there he put a switch in just doesn't does an absolute amazing job uh, made it to where I can fit a the size 31 battery in it this is for my electronics and my and my uh, my cranking battery and everything else a little bit of overkill but i'm on the boat all day long running electronics all day long sometimes two days in a row and i want to be able to have enough electronics he still was able to fit the power pole pumps but everything is really tight in there you see the other pump right there tucked in um i got a three bank charger at the top of it's right here <laughs> literally there is no more space left in here 22 gallon tank 
One thing about this motor I forgot to tell you, and somebody's going to ask me, is how is it on oil? It is a two-stroke, so it has two-stroke oil. It sips oil. I've had I've probably been, I don't know how many hours I've run it. I have to look. Probably 15 hours, if I had to guess. It And I still haven't gone through a gallon, so it sips oil, which is nice. All right, so we walk around. This is just my catch-all hatch for right now. It's got a bunch of junk in it, a bunch of extra stuff. Uh, I got to go through that and organize it. And then that's my food box. 15 gallon live well. All right, so under the seats. More storage. Same here. Got my throw cushion, easily accessible. You guys don't think it's stuck down in there, I can get it out in a heartbeat. Always those people who think they know all the rules. <laughs> all right, so this right here, I took a, a, a Yak Attack uh, gear track. I mounted it right here. This is a Yolotech mount for my Yolotech power sticks. And I'd show you it, but it's sitting in my hand and hooked up to this, to this uh, camera. But power stick goes in here, hook that up to the battery that you saw up underneath there. And uh, then I can sit down and have a nice little stand right here. Be able to uh, to film you guys while sitting in the boat. I love it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put some more gear tracks all around the boat so I can change some things around. I just got to find the right spot for them. All right, so the console. One of the cool things about this deal is that um, is how computerized it is. I had this dial right here, or the computer that I'm calling it, moved from up here down to here when they... When uh, Justin over at Bucks Island moved my or mounted my electronics, and so what this does is it's it's everything. It tells me RPMs, it tells me gas, it tells me how much oil I've got left, all kinds of stuff. It's uh, it tells me how many hours I've got on the motor. It's just it's amazing. All the information I need to know about the motor and and it is right there. And so I love it. All right. So next is. Uh, if you look underneath my console, real careful underneath there, you see my foot pedals underneath here. And it's not one of those hot foots. It's actually a digital throttle. Um, and what's nice about that is with the computer right here, you can you can change between foot control throttle and hand control throttle. And that comes in handy because I'm a lot more a lot better in rough water with a hand control. So if it, if I'm I've got a lot of chop or I've got a lot of uh, I've I've got to do a lot of technical um, uh, uh, boating <laughs> just i don't even know what to call it but anyway you have to boat technically and, and be able to to feather the throttle back and forth i find it easier to do it with a hand all the bouncing around and stuff i'm i'm bracing myself with my legs and it and i and it tends to to transfer to the foot pedal so i'm not going to use the foot pedal during during bad uh or rough water so that's really really nice to be able to do that one thing i've had to get used to though is with that foot pedal that throttle is sensitive you push it, it goes. There is no delay, um, and it's not. And it's real easy to push. It's not. It, it, you're not pushing against a spring or anything. It just works, man. It's excuse me. It's awesome. I really do like. It. All right. So on the console, I've got two Raymarine Axioms, and you ask me why I uh, little black screen right there. Anyway, and you, and you ask me ask me why I use two on the console, and this is how I have them set up. I have one for a map. And have the other one for side imaging, down imaging, and regular sonar. And uh, the reason I do that is for the maximum amount of, of information. If I need a full screen side scan because I'm doing something special, I'll switch it over to here. But the mapping is my most important. And I'm about to do a video about mapping, about how to read a map. Anyway, that's the most important to me. And then for this one, it's just being able to, the biggest screen that I can get on here... If I could get a 12, I would, because the bigger the screen, the more information you get from your from your transducer. So, I love it. And it was a challenge to get these suckers mounted on here. I know that, so I really appreciate Justin over at Bucks Island. He made it work. All right, so right here in the center, I've got vinyl flooring. It's actually kind of a stitched vinyl. I don't know what it's called, but anyway, um, I love this. And this was one of the, the, the things that they threw on there just to try. I don't think it's in a production unless you ask for it. But what I love about it is this is what this part of the boat, the, when it's carpeted and it gets wet, this is the last part that dries. And it is the most apt to, to mildew and mold and get muddy and everything else. So 
this is excellent you see that little mud spot right there yeah that's uh that's easy all i got to do is just wet it down and wipe it with a cloth but this will help uh, keep the boat looking nice and clean and i mean you can already see the dirt that's formed on the on the carpet right here and the bottom will look just like that so uh, i love it and it also makes it to where everything drains really quick which is really nice it's easy to get the hatches and everything else to drain it's more difficult to get the floor to drain when everything gets wet so that's a great add-on i really appreciate that so far so good all right so i tucked my ninja net right up out of the way so it's right there real easy to get to it's my graveyard so i keep all my used soft plastics throw them in the trash can at the end of the day or the end of the week all right so this is just a little step they're trying hopefully they'll make it bigger i want it to go all the way across but just a little place to keep crap i might use it just as a trash can but anyway so all right so let's open up the rod locker i can fit 20 rods in this rod locker and typically the rod locker and these are supposed to be centered but i like my rod locker off to the left because there's plenty of room right here to get a long rod in and out and it's better to have your bulk of your weight in the center so rods are light tackles heavy so i put my tackle in the center of the boat but uh let me look in here real quick it'll hold an eight and a half foot eight well probably an eight foot three eight foot four rod but i'm pretty sure you can fit an eight and a half foot rod in there i took a eight foot rod and shoved it up in there and it went another six or seven inches so uh nice long rod locker all right so let me show you kind of show you guys how i've got this all organized these are all the the new plano boxes i just got if you got if you guys saw the the post over on instagram but uh I finally got everything organized. So right here, I'll go from the front to back. I got my THKO wake baits, my flat cranks, top water, lipless crankbaits, uh, six to ten foot square bills, 3XD Spro double uh, DD crankbaits, deep divers, 5XD, 6XD, 8XDs. So those are all my. I love XD cranks. Anyway, chatter baits, uh, all of my bullshad swim baits. A box of rage bugs because that's what i use the most when it comes to flipping soft plastics for flipping spro frogs 13 fishing frogs terminal tackle which this is a pretty cool, pretty cool little box i remember when falcon or i can't remember what the name of that company used to make these but anyway so it keeps all of my terminal tackle separate i'm going to do that old trick uh put a uh, some shelf liner on this in the lid of this i'll make a video about that too i've got an old old video but i'll remake that one show you guys how you keep the crap from going from you know falling out of the boxes or coming falling out of the squares swim jigs over here we got small you know my punch box my ned and nico rig box shaky heads jig heads brush jigs dock jigs and football jigs so those are all my jigs and uh crankbaits take up most of the room of course but uh and then in that box right here that's all of my 13 soft plastics, 13 fishing soft plastics. I keep them in their own little box. And there's plenty of room. But you can see, kind of, I don't know if you guys can see way up in there, you can see where there's rod tubes and stuff, places to slide a rod. So this is the original rod locker, and I took the rod racks out. There, there were two rod racks right here. I just went ahead and drilled those out and pulled them out. All right, right here in the lid, and I've only got a swim jig on there right now. I had a frog and a couple things this morning. Is This is a, a little thing that you can see where it just you just kind of tuck your your hooks in there and hold your gear your stuff up and what it does is it allows spinner baits and jigs and stuff like that to dry before you put them back in the box but i want to get a bunch of these and use them to stage hooks and things like that things that i want to get to real quick the hooks that i use the most and that way i don't have to go dig it in the boxes just pull a hook out and retie or do whatever so that's uh those are really really neat they also make them that hold crankbaits and things like that i really i'm more just in just the ones with the the slots for hooks but uh friggin awesome genius and uh i'll leave a link to 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 the where you can get all of this stuff or take a look at all this stuff the the things that uh that i'm showing i'll try to leave a link down in the description like i always do all right next box all right and this is more storage it goes way up in there I got my toolbox in there extra life jackets uh, my Z-Man soft plastics, uh, my box, my new bags, soft plastics, or KVD, whatever they call them, worm bags, but uh, they smell weird though. I don't know what they smell like, but they smell weird. But anyway, 
So the thing I don't like about these is you can't see what's inside of them. So I, I took the uh, the uh, extra special um, high quality uh, labeling tape, also known as white duct tape, and uh, and marked them. So I got straight worms. I've got big worms. I've got trailers or flipping flipping baits. And then the other one is trailers. So pretty dang cool and it's just you get a ton of stuff in there got little bags that are in there there's another one in the other in the other side that i didn't mention but you can slide stuff down in those little net bags all right and then going up front got an 80 pound thrust main coda ultrax pretty slick little deal it's got a little bit of a vibration after it when it gets above five uh, five or six it's uh i got to figure out what the vibration is i i trained i changed the prop out to my old prop and it still vibrates quite a bit but uh anyway i love these trolling motors any trolling motor that's got spot lock on it is is and acts like a, a cable steer is perfectly fine by me makes fishing so much easier it's my old tech power stick my little sony camera i can't remember which one it is but that's my main camera these days I got my microphone unhooked from it and everything else, but that's usually what I'm filming with. And this thing will, this thing will extend, you know, way up here as high as I need it, which are really nice. That's the new one. It's a little bit more durable, and it will. I mean, you can go as fast as you want to go, and it doesn't come, doesn't bend or anything else. I think they say like 60, 70 miles an hour. This boat don't go that fast. So an Axiom 12 up front, so I can see it while I'm standing up. I don't have to get close to it to see the detail. It, uh, it is sitting on a naff pot. I saw these at a show a couple of years ago and fell in love with them. It's just clean, man. No wires coming out of it. Nothing. Everything slides right down. It goes right down in that, in, in that tube. It goes right in underneath the boat. I love it. It's got tamper-proof screws here and up underneath there. It does. They're just, just smooth and clean, and I really liked it, and it really does look good. It looks huge, but it's, it's not. The other thing I like about it is it, it pivots. So the fact that it pivots, it's uh, just, I like it so I can just turn it when I need to. And I'm standing outside the boat and I want to work on it. I just turn it around and stand outside the boat and work on it. I don't have to climb inside the boat and get down on my knees. So love it. Absolutely love it. Let's see if there's anything else I'm missing. Uh, top speed of this boat right now with all of the heavy batteries and stuff, I'm going to change to lithium as soon as I possibly can. Uh, top speed is uh, 42 miles an hour. I should be able to get 46 once I lighten things up. Um, I have probably the maximum amount of weight in the back of this boat that can possibly have just because of all the crap. One thing I forgot was my boom stick. You guys see the see the shot? Let me get around here so the sun's not in the bright sky's not in your face. But that's how I set up my boom stick. I've got a Hero 5 on the top with the power plugged in. Long cord going all the way to a battery pack. This is a... Uh, gold zero battery pack they run about 100 bucks but man they last for days and uh it's got a solar charger that can charge it up if i need to so that's how i get that back angle um little thing they added for me was a cleat right here so while i'm so i when i'm pulling up to a dock sitting in the driver's seat all i gotta do is uh, that's where my tie down rope is hooked up my dock rope is i just hooked up to the dock i don't have to get out of the seat to do it which is nice kill switch so on and so forth oh Hydraulic jack plate. I got the switch down here. And uh, what a hydraulic jack plate is when you're in real shallow water. It brings your motor up. So I can stay on plane in real shallow water. So, yeah, I go through places that'll make people, gonna scare a few people that aren't used to it. It's pretty funny. Woo, but that's it. And the sun is bright. <laughs> But that is my Lumicraft Pro 185, guys. I hope you enjoyed this walkthrough. Um, I, I typically don't like to do them. I just don't like to show off my stuff. But uh, if, uh, if you have any questions, just leave them down in the, descri down in the, in the comments. Um, but like I always say, be sure to introduce somebody to fishing. Introduce them to my channel. Let me help you teach them how to fish. More importantly, get out on the water. Go out and catch some fish and have a great day. We'll see you.